Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome this, to this lesson on problem solving techniques. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at run charts. So our objectives for this lesson as follows. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. First, define what is meant by a run chart. Then we're going to use run charts to measure and monitor performance. We're going to also use upper control limits, UCL for short, and lower control limits, LCL, to determine if a process is in or out of control. Run charts are part of section 7 in our curriculum, which is about performance measurement, and in this section we have just one problem solving technique, as you can see, run charts. So let's start off our lesson as we have with all the others, uh, with a, an inspiring quote. This one comes from Julie Kupferberg, who was a singer and a poet, and he once wrote, when patterns are broken, new worlds emerge. So a lot of what we want to talk about in this lesson is pattern, patterns and what goes wrong and what insights we can draw from those patterns. So with run charts, this is a picture of a run chart using data that I've made up just for illustration purposes. This is a diagram that's easy to draw uh, and that it measures performance. It's going to show us links and trends and patterns and relationships over a period of time. So we can see the chart plots data on the uh, y-axis and time on the x-axis. So we want to uh, monitor data over a period of time. We do this because we want to be able to monitor processes for quality, mostly doing this for quality control. We want to be able to compare data over a period of time and then we can focus attention on the areas where things are going well and also focus attention on uh, when things go wrong. How do we fix them? How do we measure them? How do we know that something is going wrong unless we measure it over a period of time? And it's also important for tracking information as well. So a run chart, uh, a simple diagram like this, uh, can tell us a lot about what's happening over time. Now let's develop this a little bit more. Um, we first of all have to decide what it is that we're going to measure. So we're going to gather some data, create the graph, and as I said before, on the y-axis we're going to put our measurements, and on the x-axis we're going to do it, uh, put down the time measurements. You could do it the other way, way around, but it makes more sense and it's much more readable and much more strong visually if you have time on the uh, x-axis across the bottom. So let's take a closer look at this data here. So this is data, again, made up data for uh, to use this chart for illustration purposes. And we've got data over a period of time here, in this case over a period of 25, it could be days, it could be weeks, it could be hours, and we're able to monitor and look for trends. So we can see in our diagram here that there is um, um, quite a lot of variation occurring up and down over this period of time. So if this, for example, was measuring uh, something like, uh, say, weight of an important piece of equipment or length of an important piece of equipment, we can see that there's a lot of variation and they, that may not be a good thing. So I'm using spreadsheet, I'm using Excel uh, uh, here, because you can use any spreadsheet software to help you draw a run chart. And in our how-to section after this video, uh, we'll show you how to create a run chart. So here's my data. And, I and I'm simply a run chart, it's just a simple plot of that data. Now I'm going to take a step back here and take a look at a statistical concept known as the normal distribution. Uh, every process contains variation, so there's natural variation happening all the time. It's, and it's usually randomly distributed. And differences are scattered around the average. So if I jump back here for a second, we can see in our example that if the average was 1, that there are differences around that. And, and this gives us the concept of what we call the normal distribution. Many of you will know this as the bell-shaped curve. So you can see here, if, we, if our data follows this pattern here, it's considered to be a normal distribution. And we can see in the centre here that half the values are above the, the centre and half the values are below the centre. And the way these are measured is are what we call standard deviation. Now you need to go to other lessons to find out more detail about what standard deviation is and how it's calculated. But put simply, it's a measure of the variation of a process. So we can see that half the values lie above zero in this case here. 34.1% uh, of all our values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. This zero here is going to be replaced by the mean or the average of all the values. 13.6 uh, uh, lies between one and two standard deviations away from the mean and 2.1% of values lies uh, another between two and three standard deviations from the mean. So if we add these three values together, we get 49.8%. So 49.8% of values to the right of the mean or above the mean 
um, will fall within three standard deviations. And if our curve is a normal distribution, we can see that 49.8% of all values will lie within three standard deviations below the mean. So when we get our results like this, this is considered normal, this is considered um, a natural variation. So if we don't get this, for example, if our diagram is skewed to one side or there isn't a clear bell shape, that could be down to non-natural variation. And that implies that the process that we are measuring could well be out of control. So do, uh, if you want to learn more about standard deviation, uh, check out some other courses on Udemy or online and you'll find out a lot about it. So now back to our run charts. So I'm using the same made up data again, and I'm going to um, uh, uh, use the average line is along the 1.0 line here in the center. Again, this is fictitious data for illustration purposes. So I want my average, my average value is 1.0. So let's say that's my target for the process that I'm making. I'm making something that is 1.0 units. Now above this, I've got the upper control limit line, and that upper control limit is set here at 1.4, which means that uh, that is a value of three standard deviations away from the mean. So we don't want any values above that, and also we have a LCL, a lower control limit, and we don't want any values below that. The LCL is also set at three standard deviations, this time below the mean. So we want, if for natural variation, we want everything to fall within the UCL and the LCL and to be as close as possible to the average. And we can see in this chart here that there are some potential problems. One potential problem here is that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values in a row increasing. And that violates what we call the seven run rule. If there are seven values increasing or decreasing at any one time, that means that there is a problem that the process is out of control. You can also see over here on the right hand side that there are seven values also below the average and that's also considered a violation of the seven run rule and it also would mean that our process is out of control. And finally in this diagram here we can see we actually have one value that exceeds the upper control limit. So we've got a lot of evidence on this one here from these three purple lines that our process, our fictitious process here, is out of control. And what that would mean then would be that once we've got our process, that at some stage we have uh, introduced an intervention. So this is how we've added in some more time onto the same chart here. And I can see it's going up and down. It's violated um, the seven run rule on several occasions. And now I have um, imposed an intervention here, which could be something like, you know, recalibrating a machine or resetting or, or doing something or fixing a problem or if there's a broken part. And we can see now that the values after the intervention are all well below the upper control limit and well above the lower control limit. And our process here is back in control. So let's take a look at an example. And this sample here is based on a, a manufacturing of rulers, the rulers that we draw lines on pieces of paper with. And let's say we're doing daily sampling of these. So we want to do some quality control. We have a machine that makes these rulers. And we, we take a sample every single day and measure, the, measure them over a period, in this case here, of 30 days. We've got one month's data here, and the average is at 30 millimeters. Now that's uh, 12 inches for those of you using imperial measurements. So our ruler, uh, we want them to average length to be 30 meters. Now these might be uh, school rulers, our rulers are not, are not used for precise engineering. So we want them to be uh, as close as possible to 30 meters. We know because of random variation that some of the rulers will actually be longer than 30 millimeters or 12 inches, and some of the rulers will be uh, less than 30 meters, say compared to a, an industry standard or, or a scientifically calibrated 30 millimeter ruler. So in this case here, we've set our upper control limit at 30.2 millimeters. So we want, uh, that's three standard deviations above um, the uh, mean of 30 millimeters, and our lower control limit is 29.8. So 0.2 above and 0.2 below represents um, three standard deviations away from the mean. So is this process in or out of control? So we can see it starts off okay, and then something obviously happens, whether it's a fault in a machinery or uh, somebody has made a mistake or uh, reset something in the wrong way, we can see that the uh, length of the rulers drop below the LCL. So this is a serious problem here, going down to a ruler here at the end, a sample on the 10th day, which is 29.2 millimeters. So that's not satisfactory. We can see that some effort has been made uh, to fix this, but the uh, rulers start increasing in size and gradually increasing size over time. So we have a problem here 
uh, with um, seven rulers uh, below the LCL. And we also have over here as well a quite lengthy sequence of values where the seven run rule is also being violated and indeed uh, the measurements go up over the UCL. So something has gone wrong here and we have the visual evidence uh, to indicate this to us by taking samples and accurate measurements over a period of time. So uh, when we compare an in-control um, run chart with an out-of-control run chart, it helps us understand a little bit more about what the situation should be. So in control, we can see we have nat a natural pattern. Common cause variation is happening. We will get variation around the mean, but these are small variations and our values are within the lower and upper control limits. So my upper chart up here, this process is in control. Now I've got to be careful whether you can see that on three occasions, the values actually reach the LCL and we can also see at the end that the values are increasing a little bit higher. So it does give us some indication that there might be problems, but we would consider this uh, upper chart here in the right hand corner uh, that represents a process that is in control. Now when problems happen and we need to solve them, uh, we can use this diagram as we can see in the bottom. We've just uh, gone through this example here. And this is an out of control situation where the data are outside of the control limits. In this example here, we have data in the beginning below the control limits and at the end above the control limits. Plus we've got violations of seven run rules in here. So this diagram down here represents a process that is very much out of control. And we now have evidence to go ahead and try and find out what's wrong, what's causing this and how can we fix it. So a run chart in that way is a, is a very, very useful tool in, pro in problem solving. It gives us a visual, uh, it gives us a, um, a pattern. We can look at our data over a period of time and see what's going on. We can look at historical data and make comparisons. And of course, as we have done here, we can decide whether a process is in or out of control. So in the assignment for this section here, we're going to take some data, uh, which is website uh, marketing data. So the number of website visitors per day, again, I've made these numbers up, uh, over a period of time. So we've got a 31 day uh, July, and we've got the days of the week when these measurements are taken. And we've got the number of visitors per day visiting the site. So we're going to take this information and I want you to set upper and lower control limits at three standard deviations. Remember in our how to video, I will show you how to do this. I then want you to draw the control chart, examine what variation, if any, that you find, answer the question, is the process in or out of control, and then draw conclusions from your flow, your run chart. So in summary, run charts provide a visual summary of a process measurement and control. We know that process is very naturally, so we can expect some variation, but if a process measures above or below the control limits, it's said to be out of control. And finally, a process is also said to be out of control if the seven run rule is violated. So that's how you use run charts for problem solving. I hope you found this video useful.